Make it. Don't fake it leading with authenticity for real business success by Sabrina Horn. Fake it, till you make it, first appeared in print in a 1973 appellate court document dealing with a pyramid scheme. In the early 1970s, a company used the motto, fake it tile you make it, to sell self-improvement classes and to recruit students to sell the classes to others by claiming they gained riches as a result of what they learned. The fact that the students weren't rich at all did not impede their sales pitch. The company told them to fake it, so they did. The court quoted the company's motto in its decision against the firm, the first record of faking it as corporate policy. Let's agree from the get-go that not all lies are equally bad and that some are therapeutic, useful, or even necessary. The principle of power posing has made its way into contemporary pop psychology. Advocates of fake it till you make it urge people to adopt physical postures associated with confidence and power to feel more confident and powerful. These tactics may help temporarily, but faking it can mean deceiving others for your own gain. Notwithstanding PR's association with hype and spin, sound public relations practices rely on telling the truth. Good PR tells the truth compellingly, without exaggeration or deception. When Sabrina Horn pitched her PR services to PeopleSoft, then a startup company with a well-respected executive team, she faced the daunting challenge of telling the company what it needed and how she could go beyond its expectations. Overcoming her fear of failure, she resisted the temptation to simply invent a plan. Instead, she conducted in-depth research into the details of the company and its competition. She then developed a proposal tailored to the organization's requirements, including some needs its leaders had not anticipated. When you are first starting out, doing and being anything to win the business is tempting and also dangerous. When an executive asked Horn if she could handle a specialized area of investor relations, she replied honestly, she could recommend and work with an expert in that area. Instead of replying with a strong, yes, to a question about whether she could get a story about the company published in a high-profile business publication, she told the questioner what it would take to achieve that objective. She won the account. Establishing a new business takes a different set of skills than managing growth. Fear of risk can doom an enterprise. Face up to and analyze the risk involved to understand the potential downside. Keep in mind what inspired you and what advantages you gain from coping with risk. Hire the right people for each job. Establish a clear financial discipline and stick to it. At some point, you may face capacity constraints. When that happens, delivering the same high level of great service to all customers may not be possible. Sometimes the prudent course is to say no to certain business. Many business people aspire to become CEOs, but establishing a new business takes a different set of skills than managing its growth. The best CEOs grapple continually with new challenges, learn new things and surmount new obstacles. The wrong move can sometimes be better than no move at all. Although results may differ depending on industry and circumstances, anyone in a position of leadership can benefit from adopting certain attributes and characteristics. First, a clear vision of reality should underpin every business decision. Optimistic leaders inspire others with their positive outlook and persistence, but optimism needs firm roots in facts and reality. Leaders who set an example of integrity encourage honesty throughout their organization and provide a preventative barrier against faking it. The best leaders understand their strengths and recognize and acknowledge their weaknesses. Since CEOs face difficult challenges, the ability to get up after a knockdown punch is indispensable. A leader must communicate with various stakeholders, sometimes delivering difficult messages in crisis situations. Clear communication means conveying the same message through different channels or in different ways. Effective leaders don't procrastinate, and, when changing circumstances demand a new response, they adapt. Intuition is not a sixth sense, but, rather, the result of accumulated knowledge based on observation and experience. CEOs learn on the job. This is not faking it. There is a difference between doing your best and pretending to be the best. When anxious people bring stressful problems to you, as their leader, you may be tempted to react reflexively. Instead, listen, get the facts and put everything in perspective. If the situation demands an urgent response, plan to address the problem in stages, 
since the right steps may not be apparent at first. This process also applies to building a leadership team. Team members should have complementary skills instead of reflecting the CEO's personality. All members should have integrity and authenticity. Smooth times and rough times require different managerial skills, and may require different teams. During the first decade Horn's company was in business, the internet and software industry grew rapidly. Then came a decade of downturns in the broader economy, accompanied by faster tech cycles, changes in the PR industry and other crises. The first decade, the firm needed a team of entrepreneurial builders. In its second decade, it required leaders who could adapt to the shift from a growing market to a contracting one. Being authentic and true to your values demands that you stand up for yourself, your company, and your employees, even if this risks alienating a client and deliberately jettisoning one. Gender brings another dimension of challenge. As a young woman building her own business in a male-dominated industry, Horn developed a repertoire of effective responses to bullies who wouldn't pay invoices, rivals who spoke disrespectfully about her to others in the industry and clients whose idea of a business lunch included hands-on communication. A company's core values determine almost half of its reputation and market value. A founder must clearly define these values. An organization's core values express its raison d'etre. Record your company's values in a written statement and make sure they pervade everything the company does, though they may evolve with changing circumstances. Your values should characterize your company and differentiate it from your competition. Be ready to lead by example and live up to those values in every way. Create a mission statement tailored to your company's values. Regrettably, most mission statements seem like lists of platitudes any company might espouse. Be sure yours reflects the distinct nature and goals of your organization. A brand should represent reality, both promising and delivering the goods. A brand is, largely, a relationship between the customer and the company. Branding expresses a company's leadership, culture and values. Brands that succeed communicate authenticity. Recent research indicates that, increasingly, consumers base their purchases on a company's values and reputation. Companies that do not articulate a values-driven vision can run the risk of slipping into commoditization. Brands are not self-sustaining. They need careful tending and protection. Beyond the weight of the CEO's reputation and the enterprise's core values, brands are vulnerable to corporate efficiencies, employee morale, customer response, subcultures, product differentiation, and market expansion and contraction. Some firms may succeed without articulating the values that sustain their brands, but they risk making their sales more dependent on pricing than on quality or identity. CEOs often experience feelings of isolation. Fear, anxiety and even depression can erode a leader's confidence and affect his or her performance. The CEO is, usually, a company's ultimate decision-maker. Sometimes, leaders at that pinnacle have no one to talk to about decisions they must make, perhaps because of legal issues of confidentiality or risk to morale. Humility drives open-mindedness and keeps you hungry for knowledge, facts, and data the very elements of reality. Avoid mistakes and vulnerabilities by closing any gaps between your vision, strategy and execution. Horn emphasizes that she worked closely with her leadership team to manage the consequences of expanding in some arenas and contracting in others. As she worked with clients, she developed new service innovations, such as a pioneering social media strategy. Emotionally based decisions are usually the wrong decisions. Planning is indispensable as your organization grows. Establish a clear understanding of the need for strategy and define goals and objectives so you can recognize success. Brand, values, mission and vision generate strategy and strategy generates tactics. The two must align to execute an idea. During the Great Recession, the author identified three strategies crucial to her business survival get new business, keep existing business and protect the corporate culture. At that time, she defined success as achieving minimum growth and profit for the year, while holding her employees and clients together. Ultimately, a leader must minimize the flaws in plans that will always be imperfect. Every CEO makes mistakes. To be effective, leaders need resilience, which builds confidence in your ability to endure and restrains you from faking it. 
The author recounts a disastrous client meeting that concluded with her breaking down in tears. She decided to do a formal analysis of that meeting to prevent similar future failures. Don't make excuses for what you didn't do, but learn from the experience. Quickly move on to the next opportunity better suited for you. When you face a crisis, remember that your only professional option is to be honest. A company's founder is not necessarily the best person to run or build the business. Some founders pilot their companies as CEOs, but founders must be aware if, and when, the time comes when they need someone with more experience to take the top job. The founder must be introspective and assess his or her personal skills and preferences to determine the best level of future involvement in the enterprise. After two decades as CEO of her startup, having managed it through four major crises, Horn made a successful transition as Finn Partners acquired her beloved company. The same core values in management and decision-making processes that served her while running and building her company helped her analyze and plan its transition to new management. Take Aways. Fake It, Till You Make It, first appeared in print in a 1973 appellate court document dealing with a pyramid scheme. Good PR tells the truth compellingly, without exaggeration or deception. Establishing a new business takes a different set of skills than managing growth. CEOs learn on the job. This is not faking it. A company's core values determine almost half of its reputation and market value. A founder must clearly define these values. A brand should represent reality, both promising and delivering the goods. CEOs often experience feelings of isolation. Avoid mistakes and vulnerabilities by closing any gaps between your vision, strategy and execution. Ultimately, a leader must minimize the flaws in plans that will always be imperfect. A company's founder is not necessarily the best person to run or build the business. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.